Um, my name is John West, and I'm honoured to be here today to represent my father, Lance Bombardier Eric West of the British Royal Artillery. Um, and as, as well, Richard Johnson, whose father was also called Eric, and we, our fathers were in the same regiment. We represent a small group of relatives of British POWs who were all captured in 1940, uh, including the families of Private Norman Gibbs, Private George Hawkins, and Private Raymond Glover. All these men would have known my father and shared the same hardships and uncertainties and fears uh, as they were imprisoned together in one of Lambsdorff's working camps at Batum or Bitum in Silesia. We, their descendants, have only recently found each other and perhaps share the spirit of survival from those terrible years of the occupation of Poland. Uh, my father joined the British Army at the age of 19 years. He was captured uh, near Dunkirk on the 31st of May 1940 and was sent to Lambsdorff at the age of 20 years at the, in the summer of 1940. He would have celebrated his 20th birthday just before his capture near Cassel in northern France. And so he literally grew up here in Lambsdorff, close to the scene of some of the most bestial crimes against humanity and facing an unknown future. As the guards repeatedly told him, England is kaput. He'd never been abroad before and now found himself many miles from home uh, and from his family and loved ones. On his return to England after the war, he'd found that his younger brother and my uncle, Second Lieutenant Geoffrey West, had committed suicide in India while on active service for the British Army. And that family tragedy meant that my father's safe return from captivity was never celebrated by my grandparents in perhaps the way it could have been. My father was initially sent here to Lambsdorff, arriving in the summer of 1940, but soon after was transferred um, 100 kilometres away to Bitum in Silesia, where he was put to work in the coal mine complex at E72 Arbeitskommando, where he spent the entire duration of the war. By 1944, my father had become a fluent German speaker and took over the role of the camp translator from Norman Gibbs. In January 1945, which was one of the coldest winters of the last century, the camp was evacuated and for the next three months he had to participate in the long march westwards in advance of the liberating Russian. On the first day of his march, he tried to escape to join the forward units of the Russian army, but was recaptured by German guards at Glowici. Three months later, in April 1945, having survived the march, he was liberated by Allied forces in Bavaria. Towards the end of the march, and as they approached the German border with Czechoslovakia, my father told us how the guards' behaviour changed as they began to realise that it was Deutschland ist kaputt. On his return, my father remained in the British Army for another year, working as a translator in British POW camps, interrogating German prisoners. After he was discharged from the army, he was admitted to medical school in London and became an eminent psychiatrist. His interest in mental health and welfare had been sparked by his experiences as a POW in Poland. Many years later, I was proud to have qualified as a doctor myself. I went to the same medical school as my father. He rarely spoke about his experience, and I never knew, for example, that he'd been a coal miner for five years of his life. And only once as a young teenager in the 1970s did I hear him speaking to a visiting German couple. Uh, and it amazed me how fluent his German was, and he seemed to be transported back 40 years in time. As a result of his experiences in Poland and being near to the Russian advance, my father always admired, always maintained an admiration for the Polish and Russian people. 
And although he was never fond of travel, um, in the 1960s, I remember he made his own special pilgrimage to Russia, traveling with my mother while my sisters and I were looked after as very young children by my grandparents. Today's event is a similar, although virtual, pilgrimage for me. Sadly, we're not able to visit in person today, but hope to do so next year. I am most grateful to the staff at the Central Museum of Prisoners of War for the opportunity to be here with you today. The Central Museum of Prisoners of War is important to us as a site of remembrance and for the next generation, it serves as an abiding memory of the suffering, the hardship and the inhumanity associated with war. It's only by preserving these memories that we can perhaps avoid the mistakes that led to this suffering in the first place. And so thank you to the museum and its staff for the opportunity to speak today.